Hey everyone, in this video we'll be checking out a second type of work train on the Reading and Northern Railroad, and this time, instead of constructing new railroad tracks, we'll be removing pieces of old tracks from along the main lines right of way. Make sure to stay tuned and check this out. It's around 6.45 a.m. on the morning of August 10th, 2023, and I once again found myself along the Reading and Northern at Fisher Dam Road, awaiting the light power move of SW8M, switcher number 803. This locomotive is being used today on a work train, and it is currently traveling south from Port Clinton to Mooresville to pick up a cut of hopper cars from a siding. In my last work train video, we caught Reading and Northern's maintenance of way constructing new tracks within Jim Thorpe. Similar to laying new tracks, the tracks already in service at times need to be repaired, specifically their railroad ties. When large sections of ties are removed, they tend to be put in piles along the tracks where they're taken from. Many of these piles sit for years, however, they are eventually collected by work trains such as this. Before the crew can begin, they'll have to wait for a northbound NRHT. I didn't know it at the time, but the following clip of this day's NRHT would be the last one I ever got of the Conrail caboose in its original paint, as it was repainted the following week with a fresh layer of blue to cover up most of the graffiti, and later completely repainted to match the rest of the railroad's cabooses.
With the NRHT passed, 803 pulls its hoppers onto the main and blocks the railroad crossing. This is done, as we'll see shortly, to provide protection for a high rail truck as it reverses back to a pile of ties just north of the crossing, which need to be loaded into the hoppers. A hydraulic crane with a claw attachment on the back of the high rail truck allows for an operator to pick up clumps of railroad ties and drop them into the hopper cars. While this truck today is being used to load ties onto the hoppers, high rail vehicles such as this are also used to unload rails and other track maintenance supplies along the tracks. Despite being able to pick up multiple ties with the claw, the process of loading a large pile is time consuming as the operator must work to align the ties in a manner that they'll stack properly within the hopper cars. For this reason, I won't include footage of them removing all the ties from this location and instead will cut to when the job has been completed. Once finished in Mooresville, we catch the train at Industrial Drive in Hamburg as it heads north on the main line to load another pile of ties at a private crossing just before Molino.
Having better accessibility to this location, I was able to get a clear angle on the process of loading these railroad ties. Once loaded into these hoppers, the ties are transported to Zwicky Processing and Recycling Incorporated for disposal. With all the ties loaded into the hoppers, we catch the work train in Port Clinton as it starts its shove back down the main line all the way to Mooresville to store the cars back in their siding. Conductor Hudson Henry is seen standing on the rear of the back hopper to ensure the track is clear for the train and to call out the amount of clearance they have to his engineer.
After returning the cars to their siding, the 803 then returns to Port Clinton, where the crew will finalize their duties for the day, which marks the end of our journey. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next adventure.